Marvel's yeah. Avengers War for Wakanda DLC has been out for a while now, and the question still remains. Was this the DLC that gave this game the shot in the arm that it really needed? Let's dive into it. Welcome everyone, welcome to the channel, I am Gabriel Fast, I do claim to be the wannabe critic. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing, it would mean the world. If you watched my first video on War for Wakanda, you would know that I was really jazzed about this, the, you know, the, the first impressions, really, you know, the first hour or so that I put into the game, and I said a part two would be coming. I will say that this will be my last Marvel's Avengers video for a while. It's time to move on to something else. Not saying I'm not going to make any more videos, but I'm, I'm ready to just kind of move on and try new things. And I thought I would send it out with a bang by asking the question, is Black Panther worth playing? As well as answering the question, should you play Marvel's Avengers by yourself, like I did? First things first, I just want to clarify that Marvel's Avengers, especially the War for Wakanda DLC, is such a pretty game. It has so much style, and the War for Wakanda DLC specifically brought a new flair to the game that hadn't been seen yet before. The voice acting is incredible, and for once it actually feels like the Avengers have a reason to be in the place and doing things for Wakanda in a way to where it makes sense. It actually feels like the Avengers are helping the situation. It doesn't just feel like the Chala is just doing his thing and the Avengers are just kind of there on the, you know, on the sidelines, cheering him on like they were in the last two DLCs. No, this is truly the first proper DLC for the game, in my opinion. It adds quite a bit of activity to the game, as well as giving us the most lengthy campaign so far for a DLC. Now, that being said, we, you know, whenever Spider-Man comes along, we don't, we're not sure, we, we have no idea what, what that's going to look like, we don't know what future DLCs are going to look like, but this one in particular, in my opinion, for the most part, really nailed a lot of good things on the head, and it was enjoyable for the most part, up until about the last half hour. I don't want to get into too many specifics, but the final boss fight is a little irritating, not to mention that there's a section right before that that was even more irritating that almost made me stop playing. And that's where kind of where the question came to mind, should you play this by yourself? I will tell you this right now. Until things get evened out and more balanced, because I did run into some bugs and, and I, I would just say the AI for the Avengers is so bad. It is incredibly bad. They do such stupid things that should be, that it just be, should be second nature. I will tell you right now, I do not recommend playing Marvel's Avengers by yourself because I think unless you were like me and just really driven to finish it for making a video like this, I just don't know that it's worth the irritation because that's what it boils down to. There's so many good things about this game and it plays mind games with you because it really draws you in and keeps you hooked. But whenever the challenge actually comes in, if you haven't leveled accordingly, you're kind of screwed. And I hate when games do that. It just gets hard all of a sudden whenever it hasn't been hard the entire time. That's a bunch of crap, in my opinion. So shame on you, Avengers game, for doing that in multiple DLCs now at this point. Make it to where it's fun to play not only with the group, but by yourself. It did a pretty good job in the beginning of the DLC, I do have to say. But for me, I mean... I'm a solo gamer primarily, I, I mainly play games solo. Make it to where I will have randos just drop in with me at a random time. I don't want to be too critical of this game, or at least of this DLC because I know the team worked really hard on it, but it's kind of hard to not see some of the gameplay flaws. I, have, I end up asking myself the question, are the gameplay flaws, can you overlook those based off of the heart and the performances that are found within this DLC? And I have to say, this should have been the main campaign for the main game. It would have been a thousand times more interesting, and you still have the same end result. The question comes to mind also is, is this a Taken King-esque change for the game? I don't think so. After playing through it, I, I, I think it's they've made a few changes to gear and a few changes to things, you know, quality of life changes that people have been asking for, showing good faith to the audience. And that's great. I'm happy for them for doing that. But I don't think that this is a game changer. I, I think that this is finally something... I, I think this is delivering on something that should have been there day one. We should have had this type of experience with the first two DLCs we got. And we shouldn't have had to wait an entire year to have something like this. Those words may kind of sting a little bit. But I mean, I'm just being honest. I'm just trying to tell the truth and how I feel. The reward you get from beating this DLC 
it doesn't justify the time I spent in the game, at least in the last half. Like I said, your flow of, of difficulty, that's a huge deal, or it should be, it should be a huge deal to you as a gamer. Because if you're expecting things to be one way and then all of a sudden they just change, even though you're leveling up, you're applying points, you're changing your gear out, you're, you're staying on top of it like you did in the beginning, whenever it just changes all of a sudden, that's a big deal, that's bad. I do want to say one thing, I'm glad they changed up the varieties of enemies because it was getting really old fighting just aim robots over and over again. I was a little worried whenever we had to fight yet another giant tank, but this is a different kind of giant tank. And I have to say, this one was actually easier. Even though it was still formulaic, it still made sense in the context of what was happening, as well as not being too overly irritating. And if you beat the boss, you complete the encounter. Which, there you go, that, that should, that, that's how it should be. All in all, there were a lot of things that I really appreciated about the game, but the things that I enjoyed the most, it comes down to this. It has a lot of heart, the performances are great, the Avengers actually feel like they're supposed to be there. And, the, you know, the, the chemistry between all the characters works pretty well, even though some of them kind of take the sidelines. And, I don't know, it just feels right in terms of story, in terms of characters, in terms of, you know, a comic book feeling. But whenever it comes down to gameplay, which I'm ultimately there for, I want my games to be fun in a game like this, I find myself saying, yeah, this is fine if you just want to pop in and just casually play. I, I would never play this game instead of a game like Destiny or, you know, other games as a service that I was really invested in because the gear system, it just doesn't really do anything for me. I've said this once, I'll say it again. Literally, if you replace everything, get rid of the gear entirely, make this a traditional, you know, RPG action game where, you know, cosmetic items that you acquire change your appearance so they actually make sense whenever you're changing those things out and, like, you can pay attention to it. Make that change your appearance. You can still offer premium skins, that's fine. But literally, the gear serves no purpose whatsoever. It, it feels basically like it's just there to be there. There's nothing, there's nothing special about the gear, and that's just a fact. There's just nothing special about it at all, and there's nothing that makes you want to continue to grind for it other than just seeing numbers go up. That's my review of Marvel's Avengers War for Wakanda DLC, as well as my final video for Marvel's Avengers for now. So I guess I have to wrap it up and put a score on this bad boy. Well, I had many good moments with Marvel's Avengers and War for Wakanda included. I can 1000% say that I would only play this game again if I could get it on sale. Even with all of its DLC and all of its good traits, it doesn't outweigh the tons of problems that this game still continues to have. I mean, I don't want to show any of the end footage because there's a spoiler, but I mean, like, my footage was glitching out. Like, my game was glitching out, basically, at the end of the, at the, end of the game. Like, I wasn't able to really get the full effect because a character's clothing was, like, shaking, you know? And I don't know. Things like that just show a lack of polish. And whenever you have a game that's made as much money as this has and has had as much backing as this game has had and people are still continuing to play it, um, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't in good faith recommend this game to anyone who's wanting to play solo, at least. My final score for Marvel's Avengers is a 6 out of 10. Well, that about wraps it up. What's your opinion on Marvel's Avengers? Do you love it? Am I missing the point? Am I way off base? Am I way off topic? Let me know down in the comments below. Again, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. And before I go, check this out. Hello, whatever possessed you to check out any of the content that you saw today, I just want to say thank you so much for doing so. If you check the description down below, you'll see that there's a variety of different projects that I'm associated with. This is one of you Critic Productions after all. So I just wanted to say if you enjoyed what you saw today, consider giving some of those other projects a chance as well. There's a lot of stuff that uh, I'm a part of that I, you know, that, that I do. If you were here for me or for someone else that you saw today, um, again, just thank you for checking it out and uh, I hope to see you again. But until next time, I'm Gabriel Fast, and I'll always be the wannabe critic.